Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 580. Do you have brain fog? It might be from low thyroid. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we're going to talk about brain fog and what the cause is and how you can approach that from a medical standpoint, how you can fix it. Um, one of the questions that I ask my patients when uh, before they even come in on their questionnaire is, do they have brain fog? Do they have trouble thinking or remembering names? Is their memory somehow uh, changing and getting worse over time? And in general, I ask that question because I know that when people don't have their estrogen, in the case of women, or estrogen and testosterone for women or testosterone for men, that they tend to lose the ability for recall, recalling names and places, and having um, a fast processing time as fast as they had when they were younger. This is the reason that many people, as they age, seem, when you talk to them, like they're somewhere else. They're trying to think of a word or they're, they're, trying to, um, they're trying to process what you just said. So they say, what did you say? I mean, this is something that if you talk to people who are over 60, oftentimes even younger than that, you will hear these kind of um, methods of trying to get the information from you and allow their brain to think. Well, Hormones going down and decreasing over time that usually occurs after 50 in both sexes is one of the reasons that people get brain fog and memory issues. And it snaps back when we give them their estrogen and testosterone for women or testosterone for men. They get their brains back pretty quickly as long as it hasn't been um, long lasting, like over 10 years. And we have known for a long time that dementia, which often presents in the same way, uh, is delayed by 10 years. If you replace estrogen in women, you get 10-year delay in when you would normally get Alzheimer's or dementia. And if you also take testosterone, it delays your dementia for another 10 years. So you get a 20-year extension uh, of your life of thought. Um, in men, they only get a 10-year extension because we can only add back testosterone. But, but it is well known at this time that those two hormones do play a part in preventing dementia. But they also uh, get your brain fog to clear. And they clear, clear your brain almost completely within three to four months of starting your hormone replacement. But... While I was treating patients for this, I found that the patients that had low thyroid did not get all of their brain function back when I replaced their estrogen and testosterone or their testosterone. If they had a, a borderline thyroid or a thyroid that was undertreated and I didn't initially treat it at the same time as when I started their hormones, I would find that their brain fog didn't go away because I ask, I ask, on every patient, every symptom that they had when they came to me in four or six months, depending on if they're male or female, I ask them, do you still have blank? Do you still have blank? And, I, and they grade it. They tell me it's all better, it's halfway better, it's not better at all. So in general, if somebody has their estrogen and testosterone replaced, but their thyroid is still borderline or not treated sufficiently, then they still have brain fog. And I wondered about this. I would go ahead and treat their thyroid and the brain fog would go away. So, but I didn't have a lot of research to back me up. So we, there was a, um, a study done and reported on in clinical endocrine news. And that was June of 2021. And they 
research and found that low thyroid <clears throat> actually causes brain fog. So there is a very good reason for you to replace your thyroid and to actually replace it so that it's not just barely replaced, but that it is replaced sufficiently back to normal, young, healthy levels so that you can think clearly. And it, it was very gratifying to me because I've been doing this knowing that replacing the thyroid actually did complete the process for some of my patients who got somewhat better with testosterone, somewhat better with estrogen, but the testosterone or the thyroid made them completely better. And it, it just gave me more, um, I mean, it just made me feel better about doing this because I didn't have anything to back me up until now. And this is the study I was waiting for. A little bit about thyroid. So uh, we've talked about thyroid before, but your thyroid gland is right here. Basically, it looks like a butterfly. It sits right on top. Uh, it's deeper than, but it's right in the area above your um, collarbone and uh, the central, this little notch here. So the middle of the butterfly that makes the thyroid is right here, and then the wings of the, of the butterfly are out here. Now, a normal thyroid, if you look at me, you can tell I don't have bulges here or here. I don't have a big, a big thick area around my neck. That's because my thyroid has been treated and treated adequately so that my thyroid is not struggling anymore. Uh, I've had this since I was 23, so I know thi thyroid replacement well. However, if you, if you have a thickened neck or you have um, a, areas that look like lumps over here, then you easily could have what's called a goiter. And a goiter occurs in thyroids that are hypothyroid or low thyroids that um, need replacement and are not functioning normally so that the thyroid's getting big, trying very hard to work so it can make enough thyroid for your body. So <clears throat> that's one reason. You can also have um, an enlarged thyroid if you have an autoimmune disease that causes your thyroid to be inflamed. And so that's either um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, um, And there, there are also other autoimmune diseases that can, um, that can cause this. So um, what thyroid does in the body is very important, and you may not know this, but every cell in your body is, uh, requires thyroid to burn calories. So thyroid is the heat-making hormone. It goes to every cell, and it makes the cells actually burn calories and make energy, basically make heat. So that's the, the true um, function of your thyroid and your thyroid hormones. They also make your hair grow, and they also make your fingernails grow and make their hair thick and, and sturdy, as well as your nails. They also make your skin soft. Without thyroid, your skin looks like cobblestones very dry, looks like you could just scrape it off um, with a butter knife. Um, many people, uh, other symptoms of low thyroid is fatigue, weight gain, um, decreased appetite, uh, cold intolerance. People come in and say, I'm never, ever warm enough. I always turn the heat up when I, when I um, come home because everybody in my house has it down so low I'm freezing. Well, Everybody in their ho in in that house is actually normal, and my patient is no longer is not normal and needs to have her own heat inside her body increased by by replacing her thyroid. Dry skin, hair loss, sleepiness. If you're sleepy, if you you know feel really fatigued in the afternoon, especially, then it may be your thyroid. Sometimes low thyroid can cause muscle pain, joint pain, weakness. Uh, you can't lift things as well. You can't work it as long in the garden or, or uh, cleaning your house. It causes depression. It can also cause mental impairment, like lack of uh, clearness or lack of being able to problem solve. Uh, it can cause lack of thyroid can cause forgetfulness, impaired memory, and inability to concentrate. It feels like you have ADD when you don't. 
You can also get constipation, menstrual abnormalities where you don't have a period or you just don't ovulate, infertility uh, follows. Decreased per perspiration. So when you exercise and you don't perspire, that's usually a sign of a thyroid that is low. Some people even, even get paresthesias or numbness, blurred vision, decreased hearing, a fullness in the throat, and that, that feeling comes from the goiter or the thyroid swelling. And then you can also have generalized swelling and bloating because your bowels don't move very well. They actually stop having peristalsis that keeps the bowels moving so you don't get constipated. They slow that process down. Um, and so you, you maintain a, a lot of gas in your intestines, and so you feel bloated. You also have a lot of fluid in your tissues, not in your bloodstream, but, but in the tissues that makes you look swollen and puffy. So those are all signs of low thyroid, and they should be looked at and listened to by your doctor. Um, it's relatively easy to treat low thyroid. Um, the symptoms are key to having your treatment, your, your treatment be at the proper um, dose. So there is a way to start someone on thyroid that is well known and it uses your weight. So um, the formula is your weight divided by 2.2, which means we change you into kilograms, and you multiply that by 1.75. And that gives us the number of micrograms of levothyroxine that you are to be treated with. Now, I treat all my men with levothyroxine because they do great on it. Um, it is, I don't know why it doesn't work very well on women, but in general, 90% of the women don't respond to it and don't feel better. So I have to change them to armor thyroid. So I started just starting women on armor thyroid and men on levothyroxine or Synthroid because, honestly, it, it just delayed them feeling better if I started them, uh, the women on levothyroxine, because so few of them responded. So I have kind of a, um, a gender difference in how I treat, what I treat with, but um, <clears throat> the equivalent amount of, uh, say someone is, um, needs to have needs to have 100 mil, uh, micrograms of levothyroxine, that's equivalent to 60 milligrams of armor thyroid. So that's how we uh, adjust a dose using that formula and then adjust it for armor thyroid. But most of my patients feel really good on armor thyroid. They feel normal. Uh, they take it every day. And, and one of the things that is difficult about any kind of thyroid medicine is that you have to take it on an empty stomach or it's fragile. It, it doesn't like being taken with other meds. So you have to take it early in the morning. Don't, you don't eat or drink anything besides water for 20 minutes. And then you can do whatever you want to. It's in your stomach. It's being absorbed. It's going through your intestines by then. So it's very important to take it daily and very important to take it on an empty stomach and not take it, goodness knows, with coffee. Coffee destroys it. So that's very important. And something I tell a lot of my patients, and they haven't been told that before when they were given their thyroid. Um, <clears throat> many people who come to me with this brain fog are, are, have been to multiple doctors. They have been to many people who are alternative medicine and medical doctors who have just said, well, you're just getting old. That's why you can't think. Well, honestly... If you're 40 or 50, you've only lived half your life, so you're supposed to not think the rest of your life? It makes no sense to me to, like, say somebody, oh, we don't treat you because, you know, you're old. Well, that's silly. Honestly, there's so many good ways to treat foggy thinking that comes with age that we should have the benefit of the treatment. So I always treat my patients with replacing their hormones, their sex hormones, which is uh, estrogen, testosterone, both or singly. And then I, I test their thyroid and I treat their thyroid and dose it initially the way I discussed. But if someone comes in and says, I still can't think very well, or I'm still cold all the time, and uh, I then increase their dose. And then I retest the, the blood level of T3 and T4, free T3, free T4, and see where it is, see if it's in the range or not. Because it's very possible somebody's taking thyroid 
And honestly, it's not absorbing. There are some people who can't absorb it. We have to use a different kind of thyroid to help them absorb it. Or we have to use um, enzymes, uh, like enzymes that normally would be produced by your pancreas that you are not producing much of. And we have to add that and have them take it with enzymes so that they can dissolve it and actually absorb it in the intestine. So it's very important to know whether your symptoms are getting better because that's the best way I know to know whether you're actually absorbing um, thyroid or not. So that's the one step that is not explained and not provided by most physicians because they were told that it's all about the numbers. But honestly, it's not all about the numbers. It's about how you feel and how your symptoms go away. And you should feel better. You should be warmer. You should have more energy. You should be more awake. You should not have swelling everywhere. You should not have um, hair loss and, and hair that's like, looks like it's been frayed or, or it's, it's been ratted too much or, or over-processed. It shouldn't be falling out all the time. Your nails shouldn't be breaking. And unless you're in water all the time, they shouldn't be soft. So these are things you have to pay attention to and remind whoever is treating you that your symptoms are not gone. So what are they, how are they going to help you with that? And that's how they should treat you. Honestly, there's a big gap in treating thyroid. We were all trained 40 years ago to just follow the numbers. And maybe 50 years ago, 40 years ago for me. But many people are still out there who were trained 50 years ago. And it was just like, give them a little and then, you know, see if they, you know, if they feel a little better, that's it. Well, a little bit of thyroid will shut down your own thyroid and you won't make anything. So if I give somebody a little bit, but not enough to do the job for their whole body, I'm going to make them worse. They're going to feel worse. And it's not going to be a good treatment. I have to actually replace their thyroid, give them enough to actually run their whole body. It's kind of like if you had, um, if you had a, a generator, you know, you can't just give your house just a little bit of electricity and hope that everything works. You have to actually give it the whole amount so that your body is actually working. And thyroid is really important to weight loss and to every tissue in your body. I don't understand why it's not replaced as well as it should be. However, there are some things that we, that we are um, having to, um, we have a lot more thyroid problems than we used to because the government took iodine or told food processors that they didn't have to put iodine in bread anymore. And that helped us those of us who live in the middle of the country who don't have iodine in our water or in our, in our um, soil don't get iodine unless we supplement with iodine. And iodine is what makes thyroid. So your thyroid actually needs iodine to, be, to, be, to make the hormone. The hormone, when we say T3, that's, that's um, a little amino acid and three iodines. Well, if you don't have enough iodine, you can't make T3. And T4 is four iodines. So if you don't have enough, you can't make the T4. So those are the two thyroid hormones that are the most important and are most active in, a, in humans. That's what we actually need to have. But if we don't have iodine, we can't make it. Well, time, if you have a lot of time in the Midwest, you'll know that you're in the goiter belt and there's a lot of people with low thyroid here. So we don't get iodine. The government doesn't make it um, necessary to put it into food and has some confusion about what I, how much iodine is needed. But I put my patients on iodorol 12.5 because you need iodine not only to make thyroid. If I'm giving you thyroid, then you don't have to have it to make it. You need it to go to the receptor sites. All the cells that use thyroid needs, need iodine for their receptor sites to actually accept thyroid into the cell. So you may be low on iodine, you're taking thyroid, but you don't feel better because you don't have enough iodine. And your cells aren't able to take the thyroid hormone in and have it help the cells burn calories, burn energy. So that's, that is one of the big issues. The other is that the lab reports used to report what was the range of healthy people for free T4 and free T3, 
Um, now they don't. They retool it every year and they base it on the people that are at that lab getting their blood drawn. And they take all the T3s and they say, okay, all these T3s, we're going to say this is normal. Well, if you're at the lab in general, you're not healthy. You're there because you're sick or because you have something that you need diagnosed. So that is not a healthy group of people. You need to be compared to young, healthy people who have normal thyroids, who have normal iodine levels. And that's what we used to have. So I always have to write in what the normal was way back when, because the labs all decided that they're just going to say whether you're average for your community or not. And if your community is in an iodine, um, iodine less environment, then everybody's going to have some low thyroid and you'll have a lot of obese people around because they're gaining weight and they're tired and they can't exercise. So it's important to actually take your thyroid and take your iodine so that your thyroid will work if that is your issue. So if you're having brain fog and you're younger than 40, then maybe it's your thyroid and if you have any of these other symptoms. If you have brain fog and you're aging, then it's very possible that you need your thyroid replaced and your hormones replaced and your sex hormones replaced. So those are the things that you should look for if you're having trouble with, with thinking. My, pa my patients, this is the last, last, I'll tell you a little story. My patients come in and when they are better, they like say, you mean I'm not crazy? I mean, I've been to all these other people and they said I was crazy. <laughs> or that I was just old, or that I had to live like this. You mean I, you obviously mean I don't have to live like this because now I'm better. All I had to do was this, take thyroid and take my sex hormones, testosterone and estrogen, and I'm all better. I can't believe I lived like this all these years until I got to you. Usually they're crying when they say that because they've been miserable and now they're better and they know the difference. So if you are miserable and you know the difference and you have trouble thinking, getting through the day, doing your job, then you should have your thyroid tested and have it compared to the old normals, not the normals that are written on, on your lab sheet. So be healthy, go out there and ask for what you need. And if you need thyroid, ask for it. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.